It's all good. Yeah. It's so all good. I just don't know what's going to happen <laughs> as far as the conversation goes, but you know, whatever. It is it is what it is. That's what we got the spirit for, and that's what we invited the spirit in for, right? Right. I am super excited and also nervous about sharing a conversation that I had with a good friend of mine who I'd met. So many people say or assume that I'm the only gay person within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is a friend of mine who was baptized in 1976. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he why don't you share your story about how you got baptized and, and when you came, you came out not too long ago, but you knew you were gay, you served a mission. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something that there are so many people within the gospel of Jesus Christ that are gay and living a full temple recommend life with the temple recommend holder, holder. And I just feel that people need to know that it's okay and we're also going to share some things that you can do to get to know us better or anybody in that case so that you can feel the spirit of our Savior and be more like Christ. So why don't you share with us what um, what caused you to be baptized or when did you know you were gay? Oh, I knew I was gay like very early on. Um, around second, third grade easy and so but of course at that time I had no words really for it because um, I didn't even know about now one yeah. gay wasn't around yeah. that didn't come around until about 1969 okay. um, homosexual queer stuff like that they were around but I didn't even hear those so I just so know. so when did you um, what you joined the church in 1976 you knew you were gay or homosexual mm -hmm. you uh, you were baptized just before you turned 20 right and did you feel that there was homophobia within the Church of Jesus Christ or oh that was a definite yeah um, that one was easy yeah. so it was definitely your testimony and your your, your Savior your, your your love for for Jesus Christ right. that that brought you into the gospel Yes. Now yes. the thing is, my history is, is that um, I, okay, I will share this with whoever the audience mm -hmm. is here. But when when I was three years old, um, I used to get nightmares, and my mother and father were separated, um, and let's just say that no one ever came in to help me out as far as give me comfort in those with those nightmares um, so and I was always terrified to go to sleep at night and so my mother had some control over who would sit us but not much um, and so she had a Christian woman and she only lasted maybe a week <laughs> My dad was working like crazy. He was a salesman just beginning that and so forth. So he was struggling pretty hard and he had three kids to support because my mom couldn't take us because um, of the rules at that time, which were she had to be married. Um, so anyway, no one came in to comfort me. And... Um, except when this Christian sitter um, took me into the cot with her and while I was and I went to sleep right away and no nightmares whatsoever and um, you felt safe yeah you felt yeah because um, she was a Christian and well yeah mm. I mean and so she was just one of those human angels mm. but as I slept um, soon after I fell asleep I felt I felt something um, I felt that there was something going on in the room and so I opened my eyes and um, I can witness let's say that I know what angels look like mm -hmm. those from the other side and um, that was my first introduction mm -hmm. to spirituality was feeling the veil is thin on the other side of the veil. Right, yeah. right. 
And so, um, as a non-member, I had three witnesses, three mm. good, solid witnesses of mm. Jesus Christ. Um, I didn't know anything about churches or, yeah, I mean, I didn't know any. I had no Bible. We were not allowed okay. to have scriptures. Um, I had no introduction to real religion or to any religion whatsoever. So, um, eventually... Um, I was given a Book of Mormon as a last last ditch effort from a very good friend of mine and from work. And this is when you were twenty. This was when I was like um, about mm. I I was still about eighteen, mm. and so anyway, um, I loved this friend. He was great. I loved his family. I liked going to church with him, and it was a Latter Day Saint church. And and this was in Oregon. This was in Oregon, okay. yeah. So, um, so yeah. So he gave it to me, and and I just said, I just started praying about it. Um, I read it and kept on reading it till about Alma chapter thirty, mm. when I figured, okay. This isn't. This isn't okay. getting. This isn't getting worse. This is just continuing to get better. Mm. And so that's when I decided that I would join the church because I felt the spirit really strongly. So you read about 280 pages of the Book of Mormon, right? And then you knew this was the church. Sorry, I'm not a scriptorian, so I had to do a, a little cheat sheet here and, and turn to Alma 30. So yes. And I, so, so when you realized it was true, you, um, how long thereafter was it that you were baptized? Not very long Not after very long. that. I didn't wait around. Um, and I, in fact, I surprised um, all the Latter-day Saints who knew me because I was, I was very shy. Mm. And people think that shy people are weak. Mm. <laughs> that they have no agency whatsoever, mm. that you can push them one way or another way and do whatever you want to mm. with a shy person. But the fact is that shy people actually have a very good, steady, strong mm. will. And they know what they want. Yeah. They just are, are a little bit timid in getting it or going after it, let's put it that way. So when you were baptized, nobody knew you were gay. Right. But you did. And then you prepared to serve a mission. You received your endowment. Um, what temple did you have your endowment at? Salt Lake. Salt Lake. Okay. So that was at the closest at the time from Portland? Right. Okay. That's amazing. Now, they didn't even have Los Angeles back then? or No, no Los Angeles was... Well, yeah, our, our yeah. temple district was actually Oakland. Okay. And I love the Oakland temple. Yeah. Um, but I like... I love temples. Yeah. <laughs> temples in general. Yeah, yeah temples me, in general. Me too. <laughs> so so um, anyway, but I was I was going to the Salt Lake Missionary Home at the time, which mm. is where the conference center is now. Okay. And um, so Salt Lake was just across the street. It's mm. Salt Lake Temple. Yeah. That's and, amazing. Yeah. And so when you served a mission, um, you were so afraid to come out because you thought you were going to be excommunicated. Right. And what, um, what did you notice on your mission that you, you met a lot of other people that experienced the same feelings you had? Right. And, and you know, we don't have to get, we're not going to get into that, but I just wanted to kind of touch upon that briefly because we did share it and, uh, cause this is more about how can we strengthen your testimony. And I, I can feel this guy has a very strong testimony into the gospel of Jesus Christ. We just finished watching General Conference. He bared his testimony at the dinner table. And after several hours of getting to know him, I said, I asked him, can I share this on my YouTube channel? And I felt it so strong. And he felt that he was going to be asked this and that it needed to be done. So before we started, we, sh we, we, sh we sh did an opening prayer uh, and to invite the spirit in. 
and we don't have anything planned, no prompters, no, all we have in front of us is water, the Book of Mormon, my temple recommend, and screen cleaner for my iPhone. <laughs> so we're keeping this real and organic. And I said, I don't believe in doing editing because I want to keep this, but it didn't feel right to go live because with live becomes a lot of, there's things flying by and I didn't want, I didn't want you to be confused by people asking comments and questions. I wanted this to be a very quiet place for you to feel the spirit and see what needs to be shared. And uh, so, so let's fast forward a little bit. Um, you've never been married or sealed to a woman in the temple. And you've had a lot of bishops ask you about um, marriage mm -hmm. along the way. Well, not a lot, but a, a few. Yeah. And you, you've had, um, um, what inspired you to come out to your, to your ward? Um, what inspired me to come out to my ward that I am currently in and have been in now for almost 10 years? Um, and we're in Utah right now, so yeah. it doesn't matter where in the world you are, but I just felt inspired to share that. Yeah, I think that being in Utah poses its own challenges due to traditional, due to, to, tra to, to tra <laughs> traditional, traditions, yeah. Tradition, traditionalists, yeah. 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 yes. So, um, yeah, a lot of people ride on tradition. Yeah. Um, Be before we get, now, I'm sorry, before we get there, um, you shared a number of percentage of, of people that are gay and in the US there are 15 uh, or what is it 10% um, well on average on average um, from the last time I looked which was an earlier 2000 something like 2019 I think okay. it was or something like that um, the statistics are when you look at a map of, of the United States and you look at all the states the percentage is not very high for the whole of the LGBTQ whatever yeah. um, community. It's only like, uh, as an average, it's 4%. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. And so, and in Rio de Janeiro, uh, Rio of all places, it's... Well, like certain cities are, are higher. higher, like um, San Francisco, 15%, um, New York, New York, 17%. Both of those are gay capitals, one yeah. of the east and one of the west coast. Um, and then Rio, of course, is 21%, which okay. is not at all surprising to me. So, so. But then it, within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, what number is that that you, you found in 2019? Now, I was told this by um, recently, like about a year ago, that as far as Latter-day Saints go, we're even higher than Rio. We're at 22% wow. of people who are LGBTQ and so forth. And I can testify to that based on the number of people who return from a mission that I've served with in my callings that have come out to me. And just the number of people that I know that have dated um, opposite sex and then they have had to end it because the person that they were dating came out and it just seems to be more and more prevalent. So, but okay, so let's go back to what caused you to come out in your ward. Okay, so. Your church building. Um, I, I just knew of mm -hmm. a few people in the ward that were gay. One of them was one of the individuals, it was quite obvious. Um, but I, I just figured you know, I don't know who all is struggling with this, whether married or unmarried, um, no matter what age, um, that I decided to come out as gay because one, I had received such adversity from confessing to my bishop and then a lot of adversity from my stake president mm -hmm. just saying that I'm gay. And they didn't even ask any questions. They were just violent, basically, in their attitudes. And I'm so sorry because that's not the experience I experienced. Right. And I know that um, because we're a church of callings and that they're not trained, that everybody has different experiences. Right. So. Right. So the thing is, is I've always let the Lord handle those individuals. Um, and, and he has done always very well.
more yeah. perfectly than I could. Yeah. Um, so anyway, and that's why you have a testimony in our Savior and not man, because you would have because if anybody else would have probably left the church and said, "I'm not." You know, I'm not going to deal with this stick president. I'm not going to deal with this bishop and just left. Yeah, if I wouldn't have um, had experience, spiritual experiences as a non-member. And even though I didn't know how to label, okay, mm. this is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I mean, I had three strong witnesses of Jesus Christ before mm. I even joined the church. And then one of those was that um, in seventh grade, I was pretty confused because I was listening to all these religionists. I was looking for religion. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to do something different than what my family was doing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was looking for religion. And when it came to the identity of God, people had so many weird mm -hmm. and strange, a lot of abstraction mm -hmm. yeah. toward what, what God was or what yeah. the Godhead was, if, if they would even yeah. consider it to be a Godhead. Um, so I just would pray and yeah. a lot of times I was in tears praying mm -hmm. um, to God in seventh grade mm -hmm. um, at, even telling him that if I can't comprehend you I don't want to become like you mm -hmm. and um, so that prayer went unanswered for mm -hmm. quite a while um, until and you got baptized well no mm -hmm. even even before then mm -hmm. Um, so like when I was about 18 I think it was um, it was a spring morning and I had and it was the Holy Ghost who was bringing me to this but I started doing something that I'd never done before which was I started giving just thanking God, mm -hmm. thanking Him for things, and and there was a creek, there was a creek nearby, and like of certain things that I saw, thought were beautiful in nature, mm -hmm. I would just put them in the river, yeah, and thank God for those and so forth. Wow. And they were simple things, mm -hmm. and the third time I did that, the answer came to me mm -hmm. very clearly, very clearly, that the Godhead is comprehensible. Mm. And that um, that God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost are three mm. separate, distinct mm. personages. Yeah. And um, so I knew that even before I joined the church. Mm. And I and so sometimes mm. and when that happened, it was one of those stand up and shut up things. I did <laughs> not. I did not speak. Yeah. And I, I didn't tell my family. I didn't talk to anybody about mm -hmm. it. I withheld talking to anybody about it. It was an amazing and mm -hmm. very sacred experience for wow. me. Um, so the Holy Ghost is the reason why I joined the church. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not because of people. Mm -hmm. If I'd have joined because of my friend, well, there was a suggestion at work that I was gay. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a, that was a hassle. So my mm -hmm. friend distanced himself from me. Um, mm -hmm. He and I were very very close. He was heterosexual, um, but mm -hmm. he and I were very 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 close. In mm -hmm. fact, he started first time we uh, went and did some activities together. We came home on a Saturday, and then mm -hmm. I slept over with him. And um, the next morning we got up and he says time to go to church <laughs> <laughs> i love he, it he didn't even yeah. ask me yeah. yeah time to go to church and okay. i was dressed i was dressed in ridiculous 70s clothing okay floral, yeah. floral shirts you know I can see no bell bottoms <laughs> bell bottoms bell bottoms yeah platform shoes, shoes. oh yes, yeah indeed. they didn't have the jelly not the, the the goldfish in them did they no that was elton john <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Everybody wanted those. Though. Everybody wanted those. But yeah, so I had yeah. white platform shoes like yeah. Elton John had some of those yeah. as well. But yeah, so I was definitely, yeah. definitely very 70s. Um, um, so I, I, I am just, I'm loving this. And I pray that you feel the spirit because mm -hmm. I feel it being here right now. Right. And, and I do, I do. And I just, so you, 
you came out, what year did you come out in, in, um, the, in your sacrament meeting? It was Fast and Testimony Sunday. Um, let's see here. We've had a couple of bishops since then. Um, funny thing was that I was going, I had, now this bishop in, my first bishop in this ward, Mm -hmm. when I, he asked me a question in our first interview, he says, what do you think about marriage? Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided, you know what? I'm not Mm -hmm. going to play this game anymore. And so I said, I don't, I'm gay. Mm -hmm. And that bishop literally wanted me dead. Very much so wanted me dead. So what what year was that, would you say? Just to paint a Um, picture. Like Like, uh, 10 years ago, five years ago? Maybe about seven years ago. Seven years ago. So, okay. So, yeah. So So like 2016, 17. Yeah. And that was around when I was baptized. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, anyway, uh, what happened in this situation was later on, I had an ATV accident, um, a four-wheeler accident, and I had injured my sacrum, mm. and so I could hardly move. Um, it was, <laughs> it was, yeah. it was paralyzing pretty much, um, and so I knew that I couldn't go to work. I was out of money and so forth. So my situation was very dire. And so I went back to this bishop and I asked him for church assistance Mm -hmm. and he refused. He just told me no. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he didn't even say anything more than that. No. And so this is the one that you came out with. So you you think this is because you told him you were gay. Yeah, because he knew I was gay. So, so I, left the office and before I left the church I just gave a simple prayer Mm -hmm. it's in your hands Lord yeah because you know that if I don't get the assistance I need and so forth uh, I may even die so whatever but it's in your hands it reminds me of Job in the Bible where he lost everything you know or not like was like the trials were coming and coming and coming and and he didn't never gave up though Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so an interesting thing happened on that very Wednesday after our meeting. Um, My bishop at that time, he is in construction. And he was up on a roof and he fell off the roof. And lucky for him, there was a big pile of sand, which is still not soft. But yeah, so that he landed on top of. But it took all of it took all the wind out of him it he was he was actually paralyzed for a bit just mm-hmm. a short bit because he could not move mm-hmm. and not only that but there was no one around he couldn't call to anybody mm-hmm. and so he said to me he said um, as I laid there and there was no one around to help me and so forth you were the first person I thought of and um, so after that, he was a champion yeah. for gay people. He learned to judge people individually and not as mm-hmm. a group. Wow. And that was a pretty potent experience. And so that's powerful. So after that, I began to feel more and more impressed to come out to the ward, even mm-hmm. though I'd had a very bad experience. Mm-hmm in the first ward that I did that at. Mm. Um, But I just felt like I really needed to, and the Spirit was really pushing me to announce that I was, as I put it, a gay Mormon. Mm. Because we were allowed to say it back then, but you know, it's not that we're not allowed to say it, it's just that we have a strong testimony and we're guided by the prophet to, for those of you who are not members, there are so many breakaways within the the church that, that it's, to say that you're Mormon is to say that you live in the USA. You don't know whether they're gonna, you know, do you live in Connecticut or do you live in California? You know, because there's so many, and people think about those, you know, uh, was it Sister Wives or other shows? Right, and, yeah. and it's just so, to say I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the church with his name on it, 
is yeah so um, yeah so um, I think it was like around 2000 I think it was the very same year um, I asked I asked this bishop if I could get up and because I didn't want to blindside anybody mm. Uh, so I asked him if I could get up and let people know that I am gay mm. and share my testimony and witness with them and so forth. So um, he said, yeah. And he says, uh, can we... And then we had it scheduled. Well, I know that... Now this bishop is a lot like Peter in the scriptures. <laughs> he's a bonehead. Okay. <laughs> and he's also very forthright. Okay. Um, so I'm but sure he, he wasn't like Saul. No. No. Okay. No. Yeah. I'm. I was like Saul because I was an anti. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no. So anyway, mm -hmm. I imagine that in his stake interview, he he probably told the stake president who had a problem with me. Mm. that he was going to allow me to do this mm. and it's kind of funny how things work but he got released about the time I was supposed to be doing this so I didn't get the opportunity to do mm. so and so it really bothered me and I and I felt really compelled to do this so um, like I say I knew there were other gay members in the ward and so they needed to know that it was okay to speak speak about this um, and so anyway um, it was January 30th I guess around like I say 2017 2016 something like that whatever um, I've got it in my journal, but I don't have my journal here. No, so. it's okay. And hence the fact, I, it looks like we're sitting on top of each other, but we're not. But it, we are sitting next to each other because I don't have my professional equipment here. So I keep adjusting this because it's just a selfie stand. And it's, uh, so yeah. So anyway. Yeah, so, um, so mm. January 29th of whatever year that was, and it was a Sunday, so you can... Go back in your calendars if you want to, <laughs> but um, the ward ward building was unusually filled. I mean, is that the way God works? <laughs> it it was. I mean, I didn't know what the special occasion was. I mean, this was after all the holidays and everything. Yeah. And what's what's on January? Is 29th? it is it a quorum of the twelve speaking <laughs> or? <laughs> I don't know. But the thing is, is that it was unusually packed, mm. and there were people there that I'd never seen before. And so I just, I just decided to get up there and mm. just announce it at testimony meeting. Mm. And it was a very emotional occasion. I figured this was the only way I was going to be able to do mm. it because I had such resistance from my local mm. leadership wow. that this was the only way I could do this. Yeah. And I had a new bishop at the time. Um, he had been my home teacher, so he, so I thought he knew. Mm. So I thought he knew that I was gay, but he didn't understand when I and I was using terms like same gender attracted or yeah. same sex attracted, mm. and he told me he didn't even understand what that meant. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> Just like a lot of like. People don't even know that there's an app for same-sex attraction in the tools. Right. Yeah. So. So yeah. So he didn't even know what that meant, but now he knew what yeah. it meant. And so, um, and what was interesting is actually it wasn't a testimony meeting because I had been. Asked, yeah, because those would be the first I, I Sunday. Had, I had been yeah. asked to speak. Mm. I had been asked to speak by the bishop, mm. and I had written out a talk. He gave me a subject. And so I wrote out just a, I do three by five, mm -hmm. and I just put down a couple lines, yeah. and then I go from there. But anyway, um, and exactly one minute before a sacrament meeting was to begin, the bishop said to me, I want you to speak on judging. Oh. And 
He said the the mm. missionaries in our ward has said that because they have somebody that comes in and that is a smoker, mm. that people were judging that individual mm. harshly, that they were isolating this individual and stuff of that nature. And this just don't forget that. But this goes back to what was said in general conference this weekend. Uh, we need to smell more tobacco in our churches because it means they're trying. And it's not for us to judge. It's for leave it to the Savior. That's so, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. And we all have our trials. So yeah. we all. Whether we smell other people's trials or not, yeah. doesn't matter. Um, we all have trials. We all mm -hmm. have weaknesses. So, so I just toss my talk my original talk mm. and I said this is when it's happening yeah. and um, everybody was mildly surprised yeah. <laughs> um, but I got a lot of compliments afterwards and so forth but I didn't I didn't have it planned and I just said what just like planned. we don't have this planned right now and there's no script there's no set of questions what um, would you say to the person that, um, what are some incidences that you felt judged in the church after you came out? I think I felt more judged before I came out. Okay. Because I don't show. Yeah. I don't, you know, I'm not a flamboyant. Yeah, gay. you don't act. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. So I, I would hear all these yeah. things. People would just say what they would say around other heterosexuals okay and I felt yeah. I knew the judgment there and so they were and talking about other gay people but mm -hmm. not realizing so this reminds me of my friend Scott and Becky McIntosh I'm a, I'm a yeah. double agent yeah double agent <laughs> <laughs> spy for the gays spy for the gays <laughs> um, wow so my friend, uh, those of you who don't know, that there'll be a, a link to their video. It's four and a half minutes long, and it's put out by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and it's called the Macintosh story. And Scott used to, he felt horrible because he used to make fun of gays, and his son was sitting in the back seat, knowing that he was gay, and still came out to his father. So uh, that's. Just an example of you, yeah, you were a spy for the gays yes. <laughs> and nobody knew it. So that's just something that um, I, I feel is, yeah. So go on. Um, so you felt, so you, you felt judged more before, right. but what have you seen? Like what, what advice would you have for members that do judge or that don't know if they're around a bunch of guys or a bunch of people in the eldest quorum presidency or, or, or elders quorum or a bunch of a bunch of men and they're going out and they're and they're making comments what advice would you have well in the latter-day saint community and even this can be sketchy at times but announce that you're gay yeah announce that you're bisexual yeah you know um, make it known um, okay. but of course you know you have to do it on your time yeah. and I would suggest on the Lord's time yeah um, because it's, it's, otherwise otherwise it can go it's wrong. not like I had a friend that came out in the 90s and it was at Thanksgiving and I was like really you picked Thanksgiving and, she, and he was like yeah I just said you know um, you know oh pass the peas by the way I'm gay <laughs> like okay <laughs> like and it was like what <laughs> you know can I have some more turkey and I'm gay <laughs> like you just yeah so you have to but but uh as far as um, seeking support, also, I think is important. Um, From the right people. Right. Um, you know, you just don't want to be around people who don't want to support you. Yeah. Um, and that means even if it's a stake president or a bishop or yeah. anyone, or, period. Yeah, and with that being said, don't lose your testimony right. in our Savior, right. in Jesus, because he's the only one that's perfect, not In man. fact, if I would not have had a spiritual conversion, yeah. I would have left this church within the first month. Yeah. Um, because it wasn't due to the gay issue, but it was just due to whatever. 
judgment or you, know, you would see in like, I, I would I would yeah there were people who who were judgmental on a lot of things mm -hmm. and to you notice like in these conferences in the recent years they've really been trying to talk to us about not being prejudiced yeah and that's and there's a reason for that yeah. it's because we are prejudiced it seems yeah. like it's too many in our in our in our community Latter-day Saint community yeah. are prejudiced and we need to stop yeah, that. Yeah, we do. And it's something that, you know, I I feel so bad because I've preached so much that I've not experienced this judgment from people of my ward, of my stake, or even in Utah. But I have noticed it lately with comments and I think <clears throat> with the exception of a few, but they were just naive. Or innocent I would say right. um, I wouldn't say it was homophobic or because uh, I think uh, but to label myself Dennis and my, my fellow brother here as gay and to put us in the, the 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 pride what you would think of marching in the streets and dancing in tutus and let, let's talk about that for a second like not labeling we talked about this briefly, like by saying that you're a member of the church and associating everybody with that, or by saying because you're you're LDS, you must do you must be like this, right? You know, a traditionalist, a stance. traditionalist stance. So being gay doesn't mean that that you're um, falling into what you see in the news. Okay, um, there is one thing I want to say Go for concerning it. the last. Subject. Go for it. This is free, and, and that is, is and that is this. Um, one of my friends, who's a very good friend, in fact, we're at his house right now. Um, <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> and he's straight. He's, he's straight and he's married. Straight, he's yep. straight and married, and he's and he's started to tell me after I gave that talk, or a, yeah, after Elders Corp on that day, yeah. um, he started to tell me what gay was, mm -hmm. and I said stop. <laughs> I know more about gay than you know more about gay. Mm -hmm. And don't let people tell you what you are or who yeah. you are or what you're supposed to be even. Yeah. Um, just don't let that happen. Yeah. Um, and then what was your... My, my thing was that we don't want to label those that, that if you're of a different... So just because we're, we're both gay... And identify as gay and not same-sex attraction or not a b c d e what the <laughs> just keep going and and put us in that alphabet thing because we're going back to i came out in 1989 he came out in 1970 well you didn't come out no. but you knew so there's a difference in in there's a but we come from a different generation so when what gay was back then is not what it's identified as now so we don't want you to, to, I guess the message is don't judge a book by its cover just because, you know. Yeah, in, in fact, um, you know, Moroni chapter seven is known as the uh, hope, faith, and charity, mm -hmm. or maybe not in that order, but whatever, <laughs> but charity is we usually the last. Yeah. But actually it starts off, Moroni starts off talking about judging mm -hmm. and he says, he judges mm -hmm. and he says in verse 15 you are called yeah. to judge and and just think about that I mean because if we don't make judgments then we're brain dead <laughs> I mean it's hard not to you, you God God had Adam and Eve mm -hmm. make judgments right off the bat he told them that's what they were to do that's how we become wise um, and if we make wrong judgments, well, there's a thing called repentance. Yeah. Um, so there's, so the thing mm -hmm. is, is that when I say that I'm gay to somebody, mm -hmm. if they're judging me according to mm -hmm. the group of gays and mm -hmm. what they know, such as the loud and proud that mm -hmm. are everywhere and anywhere um, in media and stuff like that, they don't know me. No, they don't. Um, because I'm a follower of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and I am definitely not perfect mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of mm -hmm. um, mental emotional issues in the past that needed to be corrected um, I have I have bouts
adults with self-loathing um, and so forth but that's not only due to how people respond to a gay individual mm -hmm. but it's due to a lot of par parental stuff yeah. that I was receiving when I was growing up and so forth that one I would say is more significant mm -hmm. so yeah yeah so I think that's I say you know when you can't take anymore we need to get on our knees and that's like right there and that's just get on your knees and that's yeah anytime I've had a problem with a church leader um, where there's been some adversity mm -hmm. there where there's been some definite pushback some um, isolation tactics mm -hmm. whatever you want to say um, I've always given it up to the Lord yeah. and you know sometimes it may take a year yeah. sometimes it may take a couple of years he doesn't let you down but it works out perfectly yeah. I'm not going you know sometimes <laughs> when I was younger sometimes I'd just be spiteful and say you know what I know I bug them, so I'm going to just stick around anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's like what I said to you earlier when I said, oh, I get a negative comment. I just pin it to the top and let all my, my, my friends that follow me defend me. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know. Um... Yeah. Well, a general authority once told me back shortly after I was baptized, some of you know this story, is we need more LGBTQ friends and gays in our wards and churches to share charity and the pure love of Christ. And he also told me that when you do feel like you're not wanted or you feel like people are judging, to keep coming back. Because that shows those people, wow, he still comes back or she still comes back. or, And that's exactly what I think, yeah. Yeah, and um, it's, it's taken some years. I mean, there were people who, who used to talk bad about gays all the time be, <laughs> to me because like I say I don't show it um, and after I came out they became some of my best friends <laughs> it's just it's just weird how that goes but now I have a lot of people who respect me mm -hmm. and love me and they are my friends and um, it's taken some time just give it that time I mean we're, we're here to not only learn patience but the hyphenated word that I hate I have patience mm -hmm. all day long but long suffering mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> no no yeah. that's something. still a work in progress but you feel comfortable going to the temple and being in the house of the Lord yeah I mean I mean sometimes you know sometimes good old scratch Satan mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I like makes, how you call them scratch. Makes me that's pretty cool. That's like yeah, <laughs> you know, may make me doubt whether I should go to the temple or not. And I mean, it's almost like every single time mm. I decide to go, um, but I go anyway. Yeah, and what I find is that I was to be there. Yeah, and I'm not there just for myself anyway. No. I'm there actually for a real person who is on the other side of the veil, mm -hmm. or I'm there to add people to a prayer list mm -hmm. who are still here on this side of the veil. Yeah. So I mean, you know, and I'm there for myself, yeah. and um, so I go like about once a week. That's awesome. So, yeah, we should do a session together. That sounds fun. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I have friends that are in the bishopric in Utah that are gay. I have friends that are um, in the high council in Utah that are gay, and they're out. And um, to their stake president or their bishop. And one of them, he purposely, you know, his stake president, when he called him to be in the stake presidency, he said, I didn't call you to uh, because you're gay. But I want you to know anytime you want to talk about it. And there is a lot of programs for Fifth Sunday talks on LGBTQ issues. And our church is constantly updating. And I don't think a lot of people know that. The brethren care about us more than um, we know. There's a lot yeah. of bad press. Now, yeah. one of the things that really put me underground as far as homosexuality goes mm. um, was a book called Miracle of Forgiveness by President Kimball, who was, mm. who was my prophet at the time. And yeah. I really respected Elder Kimball. 
Um, but I really had an issue when I read the wording that he chose mm -hmm. for homosexual individuals. It was harsh, it was cruel, and so forth. So, uh, But that but, again goes back, yeah. But the thing is, is that um, I've, I've known individuals who also mm -hmm. um, joined the church or were church members during President mm -hmm. Kimball's time um, who actually went and talked with President Kimball about mm -hmm. that. And they said, you know, he's one of the most loving men mm -hmm. ever. Um, you know, so people have traditions mm -hmm. and there are traditional words, traditional actions. Mm -hmm. and. And even, you know, like, like Moroni says, um, if there be weakness, it's the weakness of men. I think yeah. it is how he puts it. And not of God. And so, yeah. like I say, um, just, cause, just because I've received adversity, mm -hmm. and I think that because I don't show um, that I'm gay, I think a lot of people don't expect that, yeah. and so I receive a different reaction. Yeah. Whereas if they re if they expect it, um, and they know about it beforehand, I don't think they'd react so strongly as they do. But but nonetheless, yeah. you know, we've had this issue out in the open for a while. Yeah, wow. What would you say to somebody that says we don't qualify for the celestial kingdom because we're not sealed to a woman in the temple? Um, hmm. Okay, this is this is a tricky question for me because actually I I sometimes wonder about that myself. Mm -hmm. um, President Kimball did make a statement that we judge God by what our parents were like. Um, I was raised by a narcissist and a sadist. A uh, great combination <laughs> if you like devils. But the thing is, is that um, I, I have had a hard time getting that God is a loving individual and that that is all he is. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of harsh words written in the scriptures, but I believe those words are written with due to men and their traditions yeah. not not knowing God fully um, and and do I mean to say that God accepts everything no he doesn't um, he he has given a celestial plan and that is the only plan he has offered yeah. He has not offered a terrestrial plan or a telestial plan. And um, he, right from the beginning, allowed us to choose who our leadership would be in the spirit world. He allowed us to choose our, our station in the spirit yeah. world. And, and we had our, we've had our agency the whole way. Yeah. And so to say that God is going to press his thumb down on you or coerce you in any way. Um, the best way, I like a certain Chinese proverb, which is, um, it says, if you have a bird in a cage, set it free. And if it returns to you, it is yours. And that's mm -hmm. the principle that God works with. Yeah. Um, because he wants, he wants you to want him. And there are also many parables in the Bible about the prodigal son, um, the lost sheep, the, you know, uh, you just think of so many parables of love and love thy neighbor. And I think that a lot of us as members may forget the example of, of what it's like to be striving to be more like Christ. And hence the multiple talks for recent years especially yeah. on not being prejudiced, yeah, working against that. That's a good point. Is there anything else you'd like to leave with? And I think it's important for us to both close with our testimonies. So uh, other than before we get there, 
because again, we didn't rehearse this. I know I've said this. Sometimes you got to say things three times for you to remember it. But right. is there is there anything that you feel prompted to 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 share? Um, um, well, I know I've gone through the suicide thoughts. I still have, like I say, self-loathing issues um, that I work on and I have to work on. Um, and so forth. One time I was one time I was giving a prayer and it was not a positive prayer. I was telling the Lord, you know, why did you even call me? Why did you call me? And why, you know, here you won't heal me from this. Mm. Um, and is it because you can't, or is it just because this is what I'm given? Yeah, and I'm to learn from. Um, and I was, I was pretty, pretty negative. I even said, you know, what good have I done? I mean, you know, really, when it comes all down to it, what good have I done? I don't feel like I've done anything good. And um, I think, in, I think in, you've in, done so in, much. In that instant, for the first time ever, the, this, I heard a, I heard a voice say. You have done good. Mm. And so, and so right now, that's been my strength. Mm. Mm. Um, wow. And that is so powerful. And that is so, you have done good. You have, I mean, you have been a member for, for 30 or 40 I'm, I mean, yeah, around 40, 40, some years. 40 something, 50. No, I'm like, I mean, no, well, actually, 40 no, years. no, yeah, 40 wait, some years. no, actually, in, in, in three years, it'd be 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, 50 years. He's been a member 50 years. And that is just amazing. You've done so much in 50 years. You served a mission. You, 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 you've served in probably more callings than I can imagine. You probably hit the whole gamut of every calling <laughs> and I don't know um, and I just feel I am I am blessed for for our friendship even though we've only known each other for um, four hours, four but, hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, but I have a feeling it's gonna be I, I decided to I asked him if I could put him on my buddy system and those of you who know me if I have a faith crisis I reach out to those and I am honored to say you're a part of that buddy system and he can always reach out to me. Yes, um, indeed. And that's, um, so I just want to say um, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I always pray that if this could just touch one person, but I have a feeling this is going to touch more people. And I hope so because in my patriarchal blessing, it says it simplifies the gospel, and I'll quote it because I've read it two million times, <laughs> <laughs> and and I trust in it. It says, um, "Oh, now I now I forget it." But anyway, um, it's like okay, so I'll try to just paraphrase it. But it says that. Use your talents to lift your fellow man. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, if you want to know what the gospel is, that's what it is. It's not putting down somebody. It's not no, isolating no. somebody. It is building them up. And you know what? Uh, oh, and it also says, as we lift others toward the celestial kingdom, we also lift ourselves there. And so, um, I, if there's anything that I would want anybody to remember, it's mm -hmm. that. Um, because that has been what my life mm -hmm. has been. I have, when bishops and stuff would not give me callings, um, because I was just different, um, and would go by tradition over spiritual conversion or yeah. convictions, whatever. Um, I made my own 
That's amazing. I, I, when I came back from my mission, I did, I continued my mission for like another 22 years. Right. And the missionaries relied upon me and I relied upon mm -hmm. them for their strength, for mm -hmm. their spirituality. I put myself with good people. That's amazing. And, um, and then when I came out to Utah, it was perfecting the saints, which was mm -hmm. working with what was known then as Evergreen. Um, mm -hmm. Which is for, a, for an underground. It wasn't really talked about. So it, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't talked about, but it was definitely church supported. Hmm. Um, and we had, you know, Relief Society presidents of the church, hmm. presidencies, whatever. Um, hmm. We had seventies on the board hmm. and so forth. And we also got to use um, church facilities. So we mm. used stake buildings, ward buildings. Yeah. We used the Joseph Smith Memorial Building. Anytime we needed something, um, yeah. you know, some facility for sports, yeah. sports stuff. Yeah. Basketball was a big fear. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't um, know anything about sports. So, <laughs> and so like. Um, it was great that I had a roommate who was straight mm. and he knew that I was gay. He had a hard time handling that at mm. first, but he wanted to move out here with me. Yeah. So I ta had and, to tell and, and what, I had to tell him three times. <laughs> what year was that? Um, well, we moved out here in um, November of 2002, but I just say 2003. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah, so um, but he he became a great champion. In fact, he said he liked he liked training all the guys who had this big fear of uh, basketball really and we actually became oh. pretty good at what we were doing actually maybe i should reach out to him and in fact <laughs> in fact this tooth oh it broke because um it was a winning game oh don't want to lose <laughs> I, my I had tooth. i had i had we were down by three points it was a really close <laughs> game and I just shouted. I didn't think we were supposed to talk about football on here. It's not football. It's basketball, which is even worse. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is like, um, I just yelled out because yeah. I, I am pretty good with three-point shots, and I can shoot from half court. And so, so I, um, I just said, we need three more points. And so my I don't know what my, that means, but my team. When you're out that far or beyond the key, mm. um, it's three point shot. I don't care. Still don't yeah, get so the key. Yeah, so you don't even okay, know what yeah, the key just, is. <laughs> I got a, I, I got a lot of work to do. So yeah, I'm working so, on studying scripture. <laughs> yeah, so, so everybody charged me. Yeah. I mean, once my teammate, not playing baseball. Once my or, teammate yeah. threw me the basketball, everybody charged me because they knew I had a killer three point shot. Okay. So. Um, I had practiced it for years, okay. but anyway, and it went in so yeah. beautifully. It was amazing. Yeah. But the one opponent touchdown just just was way flailing his okay. hands, and he oh. caught me in this tooth. Oh, and okay. um, you know, I've never had it repaired because I love the memory. I guess okay. that's good. <laughs> so I want to close with my testimony that I know that um, basketball is true. <laughs> and the book is blue. <laughs> that that uh, Joseph Smith was is um, an an angel on the other side of the veil, and he wrote this book or translated this book, excuse me, for this dispensation, and that the gospel is to be preached in all nations, and I know that whenever in in Moroni. Uh, chapter 17 verse 15 I believe when it talks about whenever somebody's pain is uncomfortable or you're making somebody uncomfortable it's uncomfortable to them and I can't imagine living without what is in this gospel and as my brother over here said that um, he's been without the Holy Ghost 50 years ago for 20 years and almost 50 years ago and he's uh, now feels the Holy Ghost is more important than living a gay lifestyle even though he still 
we both um, identify as gay. And I know that we are loved by our prophet seers and revelators and the first presidency and they care about us and they would do anything for us. And I know they would, they would take a bullet for us. And I say that as my testimony in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And for mine, um, in my patriarchal blessing, it also says something that is meant for me. Mm -hmm. It says, there, it says twice, be in counsel with good mm -hmm. people. And then it says to rely upon, to rely upon my loved ones. And then it mm -hmm. specifies what that means. Usually that means to a lot of Latter-day Saints, family, mm -hmm. but my family. Mm -mm. Yeah. So anyway, so it says rely upon your loved ones, those that are close to you. And so loved ones are those that are close to you. But then it says also, and this one it took me a while to recognize, and, and so I want to assure you, I'm giving you this because I want you to understand something that's really important and very powerful. In my patriarchal blessing, it says, talk with your bishop when, when necessary. When? Not if, not just, yeah. it's a great day and you just want to speak to him or yeah. something. Hello. But when necessary and I have had those moments where it's been necessary to yeah. go and speak to a bishop yes so um, God knows us yeah. and if he hasn't condemned me for my frailties for my misgivings for my weaknesses then he's not going to hate you either. And, and I, think, I think both with Moroni and John, um, I'll just recite John, I think, the best I can. It's shorter. <laughs> <laughs> but it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally. Mm -hmm. All men liberally. And abradeth not shall be given him. Now we hear the fifth verse all the time, but the sixth verse is extremely important. It says, um, but, let's see, it's something like, but ask with real intent. intent. Nothing wavering, and it shall be given you. And I want to say that though I never had a Christian upbringing, never had, we were not allowed to have scriptures in the house. Um, we were not allowed to be a Christian people, with Christian people. Um, the, the Holy Ghost has been with me before I joined the church, and I didn't recognize who he was, um, but he has been with me before I joined the church. And after getting the gift of the Holy Ghost, he's been with me plenty more. Um, and that's, that's, out of all the Godhead, he is the most important to me. I mean, I love Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father and I, we have a problem because I've had four fathers so they were never lasting and they were always distant whether it was their fault or my mother's fault um, usually my mother's but anyway um, so God the Father to say that is kind of odd to me but it doesn't mean that I don't thank him or that I don't um, perceive his, his reality but I do know that he lives, and Jesus Christ himself said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so I have to trust in that. Yeah. But the Holy Ghost is definitely very close to me, yeah. and I want to be close to him. And to jeopardize, to take something less, such as, it's very tempting 
mm-hmm. to want to be married to another man. It's very tempting to want to raise a gay family. I've always wanted to have family. Um, so those things are tempting to me, and I see that there are gay individuals who are very happy in this, and that's very genuine. Mm-hmm. And I see that they are good parents as well. That's very mm-hmm. genuine. But I cannot accept less. I did have a boyfriend at one time when I came back from my mission, and when it started to get serious, I had a choice to make. Mm. And you chose to. what was, was the gospel of Jesus Christ true? Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the main, okay, when I was in the mission field, the very first day I got there, and I went to my apartment, there was an elder who wasn't so great, and he left me an anti-Mormon um, pamphlet in in the in the top drawer of the after he had left and I saw it and I and I read it I mean it had the cover of the Book of Mormon on it and it, so it looked like it was just a church publication and I read it and immediately I started to question mm. am I actually mm. I asked the Lord am I actually is this your true church? I believe it is. Is this your true church? And the, and the question that came to my mind was, is the Book of Mormon the Word of God? And I can tell you that I have absolutely no doubt that it is. And that that changed everything from that day on and though I was shy and a little apprehensive about meeting other people right on the fly I never turned back from that Mm. and I did have a problem with Joseph Smith but I investigated all that I could concerning Joseph Smith I knew that yeah he could be a prophet and I witnessed to that as a missionary Mm. but it wasn't until almost after till the end of my mission that one day while going off to church at one of the branches in Bradenton, I I uh, stepped out of the vehicle, and again it was a stand up, shut up moment, and I knew that Joseph Smith was a prophet because the Holy Ghost had witnessed it to me, and so all these things mm-hmm. are true. There's a lot of confusion and a lot of adversity in the world, a lot of temptation to do other things. But for me and my room, <laughs> we serve the Lord to the best of our ability. And it doesn't mean, doesn't mean I'm perfect or that you have to be perfect. There are plenty of people who think they have to be perfect, but they don't. Perfection is a process. It's not, mm. yeah, it's, it's not a, an event. So, and that would be my testimony, my testimonies. I have plenty of testimonies and I'm grateful in a lot of ways that I struggle with being, well, that I have this gay struggle Mm. because it has actually allowed me to be, and this is going to sound weird or definitely Mm. different, but it has allowed me to know Jesus Christ better but to be more like Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, to actually care for my fellow man. The and family. when I say man, I mean men, specifically. Mm-hmm. And I've had a life where I have voluntarily gone out to help other men. I didn't care what their gender preference mm-hmm. was. Um, mm-hmm. And I have had success because I have relied upon the scriptures mm-hmm. and the Holy Ghost. And I'm actually kind of adamant about that. Yeah. That there's no other way. Yeah. I mean, and and so I'm grateful to be a Latter Day Saint. Um, sometimes I wish I wasn't, <laughs> but but when it all comes down to it, what yeah. do I want really? And that is is that I want the Holy Ghost in my life. 
and I want to please Jesus Christ and my Heavenly Father. And who knows, they may be already pleased. So They are. So, um, this is my witness. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for this. And I want to say that if you, that our journeys aren't for everybody, and that because we choose to follow the covenant path and the same commandments that our single brothers and sisters follow, if you choose to leave the gospel, we will still love you. If you know somebody who's left the gospel and is entering in a same-sex relationship, do what Jesus would do, and that's love them. If one of us left tomorrow, do what Jesus would do, and love us. Just like love thy neighbor. I, I want to say that I, I concur with that totally. Mm. Um, People find me interesting in that I don't care about how much money they make. I don't care what their church position is or isn't. Um, I don't care about their race, um, whatever their church affi affiliation is, or whether they even have a church affiliation. If they're active, inactive. Right. I don't yeah. care. Um, I've had a number of friends who were gay who decided to do something different. And I still... I, they're my friends. Yeah. I mean, we still laugh and joke and mm -hmm. talk about a lot of different things, and we're very open with each other. Mm -hmm. And they allow me to express myself, and I allow them to express th their selves. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, when parents come up to me, like in this ward, a number of parents have come up to me and said, "Well, what do I do? I've got a, a son or a cut or a, mm -hmm. or I've got an uncle or mm -hmm. something like that, some relation or." or a friend or whatever that has decided to leave the church over this issue um, issue um, what do I do and I say keep in touch yeah if you have any questions there's going to be the official church resources to the same-sex attraction transgender uh, should I come out to my bishop? Should I come out to my state president? Can I serve a mission? All these answers are yes. But there will be a link to those in, in the description. Also, um, how do you minister to LGBTQ members like myself and my friend here? Please leave a comment. Share this to your social media. Share this on your Facebook. Whatever. Text it to your bishop, state president, really society president because I feel the I know this I can testify the spirit was here tonight and today because it you saw it was light when we started it's dark now and so I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart and thank you sure. and thank I you. will um no anytime anytime and just if you have any comments reach out to your ministering brothers and sisters that hold the keys and the stewardship over you because we don't and that's um but we'll always be here for you as eternal brothers and sisters i love you and most importantly so doesn't god one thing i want to clarify you are 67 years old and you have never had sex with a man or a woman correct right and so you are following the same commandments as more than 50% of our fellow brothers and sisters living within the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, awesome. Now, I do not wish to make any falsehoods here. Doesn't mean that I haven't had my trials. Hmm. Um, and I have had to go before bishops three times. Hmm. But still... I'm doing good. Love it. So don't be afraid if you need to go to your bishop because they're there to um, to be your friend, not to scold. It's not like being called into the principal's office. No. Yeah. One of your biggest concerns is when you were when you were released from your mission, from serving and being set apart as a, an elder with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, as an authorized representative of Jesus Christ, that you were going to be excommunicated. Is that true? 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. And and that's something that 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 bothered you, but they supported you and helped you right. with whatever needs you needed. Yeah, people people can say about the brethren all they want mm. to. I mean, all sorts of evil, but from me and other people who have witnessed me, um, the brethren really try mm. to do what's correct. And this is a worldwide church, so yeah. you know you have. I have to take that into consideration, and I think everybody else has to also. But the church supported me when I could not support myself, yeah. when I had my mental breakdown issue, whatever. Um, In the and, 70s. Yeah, and so, and, and I was of the thought that they would just excommunicate me mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, because of those things. Thank you for sharing.